Hey everyone, it's Justin again. So far, we've only learned how to write equations in slope-intercept form. In this video, you'll learn how to use a new form, point-slope form. Point-slope form is similar to slope-intercept form, with a few major differences. The first difference, as you can see, is that it's set up differently, with a few different variables. It still does involve the slope, denoted by m, but instead of a y-intercept, we now have a y1 and an x1. We've seen these variables before, and their meaning hasn't changed. Those are just the x and y from some point on the line. That right there is the reason point-slope form is so useful. With slope-intercept form, it has to be written using a specific point, the y-intercept. And if it hasn't been given to you, you'll have to go through the trouble of solving for it. But with point-slope form, on the other hand, you can write it using any point on the line. That even includes the y-intercept point, so any equation you could write in slope-intercept form will be even easier to write in point-slope. Don't take my word for it, though. Let's do an example to see the difference. In order to write this equation in slope-intercept form, first we have to plug in the slope, then we plug in the point, 2 for x and 3 for y, then we solve for b, and finally we get the equation that y equals 2x minus 1. To write the equation in point-slope form, we first plug in the slope, then we plug in the point, 2, 3, for x1 and y1, and that's it. The equation in point-slope form is y minus 3 equals 2 times x minus 2. We didn't have to do any solving or calculations like we did for slope-intercept form, because any point is good enough for point-slope form. What may not be immediately obvious is that both of those previous equations were actually the same. To prove it, let's solve that point-slope version for y so that it matches the slope-intercept form. First, we'll distribute the slope, and then add 3 to both sides. And just like that, the equation is in slope-intercept form. But since all we did was manipulate the point-slope form, they're the same equation. Two forms of writing one equation. What are the best times to use point-slope form is in cases like this, where the y-intercept on a graph is kind of difficult to locate. We could tell it's somewhere between 0 and 1, but we don't know exactly what the value is. So instead, we choose two points that we can identify, and we write the equation in point-slope form instead. The slope here is 1 over 3, so we can plug that in. Now we just need to choose which point to use, and now remember, any point on the line works. If we use this point, then the equation will be y minus 2 equals 1 over 3 times x minus 4. And if we use this point instead, then the equation will be y minus 3 equals 1 third times x minus 7. Both of these equations represent the exact same line. The only difference is which point was used to write the equation. Try solving both equations for y. You'll see they come out to the same equation in slope-intercept form. Even in problems where all you've been given is two points, using point-slope form is easy. Use the slope equation to find the slope, which in this case is negative 3 over 2. Then choose either of the points to use. If we choose the first point, we get this equation. Or if we choose the second point, we get this equation. Again, remember that these are actually the same equation for the same line. They're just expressed using different points on that line. In fact, let's prove that these are the same equation by solving both for y. To make the calculations easier, we'll put the slope in decimal form. Uh, so negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 1.5. For the version on the left, we distribute the negative 1.5, and then we subtract 2 from both sides. In slope-intercept form, this equation is the same as y equals negative 1.5x minus 0.5. For the version on the right, we distribute that slope, and then we add 4 
to both sides. And when you look at that, they really are the same equation. We've done a lot in this video with the new point slope formula. We learned what it looks like, compared it to slope intercept form, and we even found equations in point slope form from both a graph and from a pair of points. But it all comes down to knowing what you need for point slope form, any point and a slope. In the next video, we'll learn how to point slope form can be used to solve word problems. Hey.